Welcome to this online course content that supports preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam. The supplemental presentation to the study guide is intended to aid those individuals who are preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam as required by the Maryland Tree Expert licensing law. Anyone seeking to practice or advertise tree care services in the state of Maryland must obtain this license from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. This presentation corresponds to the information in the online study guide. The text of the study guide, version 5.1, may be found at dnr.maryland.gov forward slash forest. Click on the Urban and Community Forestry tab at the top of the page and then Tree Expert Law in the menu on the left-hand side of the website. Maryland Tree Expert Exam, Study Guide Version 5.1, Chapter 8, Tree Support and Lightning Protection. Before taking any tree care action, one must first ask why. Prior to the installation of any support system, the objectives must be clearly defined. Are you providing supplemental support to co-dominant stems or perhaps providing support to overextended branches? Caution should be exercised when deciding whether to implement cable embracing. If the root system is not structurally sound or the tree has excessive decay or splitting, then replacement of the tree may be necessary. A hazardous tree cannot be made safe by the use of cables and bracing. All necessary pruning should be performed prior to installing a tree supplemental support system. Pruning shall be done in accordance with ANSI A300 Part 1, the pruning module. Pruning that may be applied to a tree prior to a cabling system would include crown reduction, crown cleaning, or crown thinning. Once a cabling system is properly installed, it needs to be periodically inspected. Prior to installation, the owner of the tree or other responsible party should be notified that such inspections will be needed and they will be the responsibility of the tree owner. Items requiring inspection include the system condition, the position, the cable tension, as well as any changes in the tree's structural integrity. As the tree grows and changes over time, the system may need to be replaced, relocated, or maintained in order to maintain function. If existing cables need to be replaced, they should not be removed until the new system is installed. They may be holding parts of the tree together and whole or partial tree failure could result if the existing support system is removed before the new one is installed. When drilling holes for hardware installation, the hole for lag thread or wood screw type threads shall be slightly smaller 1 16th to 1 8th than the diameter of the lag as you want the threads to bite into the wood for attachment. When using threaded steel rods or eye bolts with machine screw type threads, the dural hole should be slightly larger, no more than 1 8th of an inch, than the hardware as this type of hardware should pass through the hole unobstructed and be attached by nuts and washers at the ends. A cabling system is only as strong as the weakest component. Systems should be designed so that system components, anchors, cables, etc. have compatible working loads. Calculation of the working load of a cabling system is based on the published breaking strength of each system component. The working load of a cable system is generally considered to be one-fifth of the tensile strength. Through braces shall be used when bracing through decayed wood, weak wood, or in trees that are poor compartmentalizers. Anchors and braces shall not be installed in decay areas where sound wood is less than 30% of the trunk or branch diameter. Dead end braces go entirely through the smaller of the two leaders and at least halfway into the larger leader, such as in this graphic. The rod used for dead end braces is lag threaded to hold the wood without nuts. Dead end braces cannot be used if decay is present in the path of the rod, or if the tree is a poor compartmentalizer 
or has weak wood. Lag hooks are also not considered safe in softwood and decayed wood. Longitudinal or the up and down alignment of the anchors and or braces should be avoided. Holes should not be drilled closer together than the diameter of the branch or the trunk being drilled or 12 inches, whichever is less. And the diameter of the hole should not be greater than one sixth the diameter of the limb, trunk, or branch at the point of installation. For instance, a six inch branch should not have a hole greater than one inch. The proper ratio of cables to anchors is one to one. Do not attach more than one cable to one anchor. Anchors for cables should be installed at approximately two thirds of the length of the limb to be supported. Start at the crotch or trunk, go two thirds of the distance to the branch tip for an installation point. To maximize the strength, it is important to have the cables pull in a direct line with the hardware. Anchors shall be installed in alignment with the cable and termination hardware because as the angle of pull varies from zero degrees, the strength of the anchor decreases. A turnbuckle is a drop forge closed eye device that can be used for adjusting tension on the cable. These are important as the cable should be taut following installation. Washers shall not be countersunk into the wood. Thimbles are used to attach cables to the anchoring hardware. A thimble is used to protect the cable from excessive wear. Dead end grip termination shall incorporate extra heavy duty wire rope thimbles type three that meet the performance specifications of the federal standard FF-T276B. Heavy duty thimbles must be used with extra high strength cable. There are four primary types of cabling systems. A cable system involving a single cable between two branches of approximately equal size is referred to as direct or simple cabling. When maximum support is required, the preferred method of cabling is the triangular method, which consists of connecting three tree parts in combinations of threes. Box cabling connects four or more tree parts in a closed system and really should only be used when minimal support is needed. Hub and spoke cabling systems, where all the cables are connected to a central hub rather than to other trunks or branches, should only be used when other installation techniques cannot be installed. They are rarely used due to their lack of lateral support and the difficulty of installation. Bracing is used to reduce the risk of two or more leaders spreading farther apart or moving sideways in relationship to each other. Bracing is used to reinforce a weak or split crotch and to strengthen decay areas. Bracing is normally used in conjunction with, rather than instead of, cabling. The preferred location for a single brace rod used to support a non-split crotch is above the crotch at a distance one to two times the diameter of the larger branch when you measure it above the crotch. In this example, if the larger leader is 18 inches in diameter above the crotch, the brace rod should be installed 18 to 36 inches above the crotch. A large split or weak crotch normally requires two or more rods to hold the two sections together and minimize twisting. If multiple rods are required, stagger the bracing rods and avoid close spacing. Make sure they're at least 12 inches apart. When installing tree to tree guying, Anchor trees shall be inspected for structural integrity, have the ability to meet the objective, and be attached in their lower half to the upper half of the tree needing the support. When installing tree to ground guying, ground anchors should be placed no closer to the trunk than two thirds the distance from the ground to the height of the lowest point of attachment in the tree. In this example, the point of attachment in the tree is at 24 feet. Two thirds of 24 feet is 16 feet. Lightning protection systems consist of a series of copper conductors extending from the top of the tree 
down the main branches and trunk and out into the ground beyond the tree. This creates a cone of protection with an angle of 45 degrees encircling the rod at ground level with a radius equal to the height of the tree. All hardware should be approved by the National Fire Protection Association or Lightning Protection Institute. Lightning protection systems are used to carry the electrical charge away from the tree, not through it. Prior to installation of a lightning protection system, the owner or owner's agent should be notified of the need for periodic inspections of the system. Inspections are the responsibility of the tree owner and should include the system's condition, position, and grounding integrity. The uppermost point of a lightning protection system intended to intercept the lightning strike is the air terminal. Tree lightning protection systems may be terminated with or without manufactured air terminals or points. If manufactured air terminals are used, blunt terminals are better receptors than sharp terminals. Only one primary conductor is required, even on large diameter trees. However, if the tree has a wide crown, additional branch conductors should be installed. Branch conductors connect all other air terminals to the primary conductor. Branch conductors should be installed on large branches so that no aerial portion of the tree is further than 35 feet from a conductor. Conductors are electrically conductive cables manufactured in a rope lay, smooth twist, or loose weave fashion that shall be at least 14 strands of 17 AWG copper wire. And they should be attached to the tree with drive fasteners at intervals no greater than six feet apart. If a tree with a lightning protection system has also been cabled, the cable should be connected to the lightning protection system by a bronze or bimetallic clamp type lamp that form an electrolytic couple. Ground terminal installation should not damage roots greater than two inches in diameter. When using a single ground rod system, the ground conductor shall be installed in the soil at a minimum depth of eight inches unless there are impenetrable conditions that do not allow this and must be at least 10 feet away from the trunk. The ground rods, which are at least eight feet long, should be driven in at least 10 feet from the trunk of the tree. The top of the ground rod should be at least one foot below the soil surface. That creates a minimum depth of nine feet, eight feet length of the rod and one foot below the soil surface. Multiple grounding systems shall be used when the full length of the ground rod cannot be driven fully into the soil. When using ground rods as inline or Y configurations in sandy or gravelly soils, the rods should be located a minimum distance of 18 feet from each other and still 10 feet from the tree. Horizontal ground systems should be preferred when ground rods cannot be driven at least two feet into the soil. Horizontal systems should terminate with a ground plate installed eight inches or deeper below the soil surface if the site conditions allow. Conductors shall be installed in trenches extending away from the tree at least 24 feet in sandy and gravelly soils and 12 feet in other soils. We hope you found this supplemental presentation to be helpful as you prepare for the tree expert exam. This concludes chapter eight tree support and lightning protection. Please proceed to chapter nine, construction management.